there has been some real progress. If you look at the pledges that have been made uh, now, including pledges that have been updated uh, during the the during the during the conference itself, we now have commitments, pledges from uh, the countries of the world that are likely to keep warming below two degrees Celsius. Uh, that's a huge improvement from where we were headed, closer to four degrees Celsius before this latest round of negotiations and these renewed commitments um, came into being. So we've made some real progress, but that's not good enough. We've got to get warming below one and a half degrees Celsius. We've got to get, get on a path that keeps warming below those levels if we are to avert the worst impacts of climate change. And so there's quite a bit of work left to be done. And let's also recognize that it's one thing to pledge uh, a, a certain, uh, you know, uh, reduction in carbon emissions. Uh, it's something else to actually make good on that pledge. And so, so while we're hearing politicians talk the talk, we've got to make sure they walk the walk as yeah. well. Yeah. So, so just to be absolutely clear, those kind of big ticket pledges we heard about last week, so we've got deforestation, the pledges on methane, there, there was pledges on finance too. You don't think that that is enough in order to help achieve the target of keeping uh, global warming to, to 1.5 degrees. You don't think they've done enough yet? No, they certainly haven't. And as you say, there's been some progress when it comes to uh, deforestation, which is uh, a major contributor to carbon emissions, methane, uh, which is an even more potent greenhouse gas on, on short time scales. On longer time scales, it's really the carbon dioxide that dominates. And most of that is coming from the burning of fossil fuels. So no agreement that really has teeth in it can avoid substantial commitments to reducing carbon emissions, it's carbon dioxide emissions. And, and that means, for example, that we've got to see the U.S., the U.K., the EU, uh, Australia and others commit to no new fossil fuel infrastructure. The International Energy Agency has told us that there can be no new fossil fuel infrastructure built if we are to avert that dangerous one and a half degrees Celsius target. I don't know if you will be aware of the, the Campbell oil field. That's causing some controversy here in the UK that that um, is expected to, to go on stream um, west of Shetland. And, you know, it has been it has been kind of a thorn in the side for, for many politicians over here. And, and the argument would be that actually we, we do need to dr keep drilling for oil here in the medium to long term, because if not, then then we're going to have to import it and that that won't be as climate friendly. What do you make of that argument? Yeah, so uh, that that doesn't really stand up to scrutiny. Um, you know, there uh, is quite a bit of potential actually in the UK for expanding renewable energy. Um, and uh, there are, you know, uh, enough other sources, um, you know, uh, of renewable energy that, that you can uh, I import it if, if necessary. And in the end, it's still not as expensive as fossil fuels because the burning of fossil fuels not only uh, impacts air quality, um, there's a real health, health care cost um, with the uh, air pollution associated with fossil fuel extraction and burning, uh, but it's creating catastrophic climate change impacts. If you look at the devastating droughts and heat waves and floods that the UK has endured in recent years, if you were to total that up, you would very quickly see that the cost of climate inaction to the UK, to Scotland, to um, England, uh, to um, the rest of the world, is far greater than the cost of taking action. 